G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's late Monday evening here in Australia, so getting ready for Monday morning over in the States, and we've seen quite a steep, a seep, <laughs> quite a steep sell off from Bitcoin. So as I said, there's usually going to be a weekend retracement, and we've got it. We were nearly at 62,000, and this has been down as low as 55,000. The CME gap, obviously, has definitely been covered well and truly, but now we've got to wait and see. Is this going to be the start of a bigger sell-off? We haven't had any real big corrections since, obviously, the pandemic drop last year in March, so over a year ago. You know, we've seen some other reasonable ones, sort of almost around 30%. But we haven't seen any sort of 40, 50 percent and definitely nothing that's come back to the sort of 200 day moving average, let alone the sort of the 100 day moving average. I don't think we've even come back and touched that really. So we'll just have to wait and see. I do think there's probably going to be more upside. But look, just be careful. You know, I hope you've taken some profits, got money on the side to buy the dip or just have at least got your money back or at least some of your money, depending on where you believe we are in the cycle. But typically, in all cycles that have previously happened, we've had anywhere from sort of, you know, 40 through to 80% corrections in a bull cycle. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But I think it's probably going to be bullish. But now that I've said that, it'll probably be bearish. And maybe this is just was a bit of a fake out to get us over that 60k mark. And again, for all the whales and the mining companies and that to, you know, dump their Bitcoin because they've been selling at quite extraordinary rates, particularly the miners and even some of the whales, $60,000 per Bitcoin. I think they're pretty happy to sell, you know, plenty of their bags here. And a lot of longs have been liquidated. All right, let's have a look. So back under that $1.8 uh, uh, $1 trillion market cap. So we really did lose a few hundred billion there. BTC dominance is growing. ETH dominance uh, still under 12% and gas prices have risen steeply. So I'm not sure what's going on there, whether this is people buying into star, um, altcoins at such a discount or whether this is people putting money into stable coins. You know, we'll, we'll know in a few days, really in less than 24 hours, I'd say we'll probably know. But let's have a look. All right, has anything pumped in the last 24 hours? Yep, plenty of things are still pumping. So Harmony, Holo, Engine, Balancer, Hedera, Hashgraph, Algorand, Reef Finance, VeChain, Polygon just continues to go. It has been higher though. Polygon was up nearly around 44 cents for a while there. Chili's continues to go. So there we go. We saw what we thought was a pullback yesterday and it's just continued to grow. But look, not much in 24 hours and only just a little bit in the last sort of hour. So there's definitely coins that are still growing. Nothing too crazy, really. We've got about four coins here that have done, you know, pretty well again over that kind of 15 percent 24 hours everything else is under and then it quickly drops off so we've only really got what have we got four six eight coins out of the top 100 that have made some okay gains then we've got a couple of smaller gains here and then after that we're really getting down to almost no gains so it is somewhat bearish let's have a look at losses all right so we've had some pretty good losses Pundi X, Bitmax token, Decentraland, Avalanche, Near. So definitely a bit of, I'm not going to say panic in the market, but obviously people have taken some profits. And particularly, you know, when Bitcoin started to fall, people have got pretty nervous. And yeah, even I'm a little bit nervous at the moment. I'm unsure of what's about to happen, but I haven't really sold anything. I've already taken my profits from a little while ago. Uh, I've got, you know, about half the money that I've sort of put back in. Uh, and that was by selling 10%. So I've done reasonably well. But again, I've only got half the money that I initially put in and probably a little bit less, actually. It'll be a little bit under half. So, you know, if we seriously tanked from here, then it's probably going to hurt a little bit. But I do think we're probably going to move further to the upside because I think there'll be plenty of um, big players buying this dip. But look, we'll just have to wait and see. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Here we can see... All right, so we got above there, got up around that kind of $62,000 mark. That's where we were, right around about sort of here. So just shy of, well, just over 61000 So what did that get up to? What did it wick? 
61 and a half sort of thousand 61,800 and then we've just seen that sell off but I really do think this is mostly just to cover that CME gap before the markets open in the morning I think we're still in a bullish trend but we're just going to have some pullbacks all right let's move on a couple of stories here so investor stumbles into 30,000 percent gain after buying a Beeple NFT for 969 dollars so an investor who purchased an NFT from popular, popular digital artist Beeple for $969 initially hoped to double their investment within two years. The NFT is now worth $300,000. When did they buy it? Let's find out. So recounting the story, Business Insider on March 14th, Fairfold noted that despite a long-time fan of Beeple, he didn't have any knowledge about NFTs and had little faith that anybody would want to collect tokenized art at the time of purchase. All right, doesn't really say into the date there. It's just talking about March 14th is when they were, um, this story kind of came about. Doesn't look like there's anything. All right, so within three months, the asset appears to have appreciated by nearly 30,000%. So he probably bought it around about sort of December, January this year. $1,000 turns into $288,000. Congratulations to this person. Again, oh, you know, I wish I was smart enough to, you know, know more about NFTs. I'm sure I could have made some really good dollars, but I just don't. Art's not my thing, and I, yeah, I don't want to buy stuff that's, you know, that I just don't know enough about uh, to most likely lose money because that's what it'd be like for me. I'd probably go and buy something that's not going to be worth anything, and I didn't really know about people until you know it was already all kicking off. So I, I miss that train, and that's just the way it goes. All right, as I said, $2.2 billion worth of longs have been liquidated in 24 hours as Bitcoin price slides below 55,000K. There we go. Let's go back and have a look. Did it actually get below 55? Yep, there we go. 54.7 seems to be holding here at the moment. And again, I really do think that's mainly just the CME gap being filled before Monday starts again. So bears poked their faces around $2.2 billion worth of long positions were liquidated in the past 24 hours. All right, that's why I don't really, not well, not I don't really, I don't. Uh, I don't do, you know, that kind of trading. I'm not into longing and shorting and all the rest of it. You know, maybe it's something I might try sometime in the future, but yeah, it just seems to, uh, yeah, you you got to really know your stuff and then stuff like this happens Really, the markets markets was looking kind of bullish, but then it all of a sudden has gone bearish. For me, I think it's just easier to invest. Yeah, that's my point of view anyway. All right, so scams are still going on and hacks and all the rest of it. So social tokens crash after a recorded hack at Roll Wallet. The founder of Whale, a coin used through the social token platform, confirmed the hack on Twitter. So a number of social tokens or cryptocurrencies supporting online communities tanked early Sunday after a reported security breach at Roll. So this is what we need to watch out for. These things happen and it's really unfortunate for anyone who's bought in, particularly if they may be bought in at the top and now this coin will probably really struggle to recover any time soon. So tokens like Whale, Rare and Pika tanked more than 50% during the early European hours, according to data provider CoinGecko. Meanwhile, the RYL, the RLY token of the competing social money platform rally spiked to all-time highs. So there you go. I guess if you're in RLY, uh, you're doing quite well. If you're in these other ones, then ouch. Look at that. That's, yeah, that hurts. Wow, from 44 cents all the way down to four cents or is that four dollars sorry forty four dollars uh if that's uh, in dollar terms yeah that's really got to hurt so you know beware that's the problem with all these new platforms and new tokens you know they haven't really been battle tested that's why i prefer to invest in things that have generally got a bit of history now not always i definitely do put some money into you know newer projects but it really is a very small amount. I'm, you know, lucky if I put in more than one to two percent. A lot of the times, it's less than, you know, half of a percent that I'm putting into new tokens because of these reasons. You know, you just hate to put everything into this and then lose it all. Is it possible that you know some of these come back? Yeah, it's possible, but geez, it's going to be tough and it's going to be hard for quite some time. All right, 
Now, Anchor begins countdown to launching of bank-beating DeFi savings account. Well, that's not too hard. Most DeFi's are paying more than banks at the moment. Anchor was originally slated for an October launch, but the team pushed the date back to November with the countdown showing on its website. This could really be it. All right, Anchor, the much-anticipated cryptocurrency savings account from the team at Terraform Labs, appears to be finally nearing a go-live date based on a countdown uh, clock on its website. Under the plan announced last summer, Anchor would allow users to hold Terraform as UST stablecoin pegged to the US dollar and earn returns that consistently outpace the annual percentage yield of saving accounts at US banks. Look, I think banks have all got almost paying zero interest, so <laughs> really that's not too hard to beat. And again, a majority of the other you know, DeFi platforms at the moment, you know, they're paying you know, anywhere up to 8% and sometimes more depending. The higher the rate they're paying though, the more riskier they are. So just be careful. All right, pretty quick one for me. Again, it's sort of, it's Monday night here in Australia, but basically Monday morning in the States. We've had the big uh, weekend retracement that we usually have. Let's see if it's gotten worse. 172, 1742. Oh. So $1.742 trillion dollars. What do we got? One point. All right, bit of a bounce back. There you go. Maybe the bottom's in. And again, Monday morning is about to open in the States where the big markets open up and they've probably bought that dip up uh, quite substantially. But we'll just have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train, but there were some gains to be made there. But overall, probably most of us have lost a bit. Stay, stay strong, hang tough, and I'll see you next time.